right, so Mule 2500, a classic. Above my head, you hear the little orbital light, letting everybody know where we are. Disconnect that. Looks like our oil light's on. Our pressure's low. Well, the engine's not running, but we're in start, so that light comes on. And we're in a parking brake. I got it in forward. Well, everybody knows if you have it in forward or reverse, it's not going to start. Oh, and it happened upon this thing, the old man had the issue that he would start it with the parking brake on and drive off. And other people would do that too, and that burned up the parking brake. So, what do you do? Well, most obvious solution is assume everybody will notice the blinking light that the parking brake's on and turn it off. But maybe not, maybe they're drunk. So what do you do? You put a parking brake inhibitor on. So if the brake's up and we put it in neutral, it won't start. As soon as we take the brake off, Bob's your uncle. Put it in reverse, take it out into the uh, world so we can get good light and do a little photo documentation about what we did. So it's completely off. Got a little accessory thing that'll turn the hazards on if you pull the parking brake light. Got a little accessory switch here. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial. That's ah, too much information. But rest assured, the Mule 2500, and for that matter, I assume the 2510, the diesel model. But the 2500 already has wiring for the indicator lights to tell you that your lights are on. So I'm going to turn on the on mode and flip the light switch on. Tells your headlights are on. A parking brake light and an oil pressure light. So the wiring's already here for these three. What you need is you need to go on eBay or Amazon and get a male female version of this. It's called a 110 9 pin connector. I think the full name is a 110 9 pin 2.8 millimeter connector. Apparently, it's fairly common in motorcycle harnesses and UTVs for. Uh, kimchi cars and things like that. Anything from kimchi land. It's fairly common. Asia. I don't mean Pakistan. I mean actual Asia. Japan, China, and so on. So you want this and in the center for this parking brake light that pin is grounded when you pull the yoke up. Now you'll find when you take this yoke apart you take this boot off, that that switch may be all gummed up and full of crap, and you'll have to put a dam underneath it to stop crap from getting up underneath there. All right. But on the mating end of this, you run that to your ground on your light. Now this is a bi-directional LED, so you can run it with either polarity, just like a regular lamp. Um, so keep that in mind when you're designing your circuit. And then the other side is plus 12 volts when it's on. Now, to get this light to light up, okay, this top right one is plus 12 volts when the lights are on. And only when the switch is in the on position. Of course, the lights won't turn on otherwise. And then this is ground. It's a constant ground. It's black, yellow. This one here for the parking brake is red, and this one's blue with a red stripe, I think. And then on the bottom right, that's your oil pressure. I think that's, yeah, that's plus 12 when the switch is on, and this one on the bottom left, that is the ground when the pressure is low. So when you start the engine, uh, the pressure goes high. Again, I gotta put it in neutral. And make sure my pressure goes on. And the light goes off. And when you turn it right back on again, and wait a second, Gotta wait. Yep, the pressure dropped and the light goes on. That's how you check it. You turn the whole thing off until the engine stops running. Turn it right back on again, and this light won't come on immediately because the pressure's still up in the uh, in the engine. All right. To make this thing blink, you get a motorcycle flasher. It's a two-pin. Costs a couple bucks, and you put that in series with this lamp. So you run. Sorry about that. Turn off my tones and the phones. There we go. So you run this ground to the lamp 
and then the other peg of the lamp to the L, which is the load on the flasher, and then the B terminal on the flasher to here, to this center left one, okay? The middle ones aren't used, so you can ignore those. They're not wired up to anything on the, on the actual harness. Maybe the actual mule harness doesn't have any center wires. You can see on here one of them's missing. It fell out in transport. I don't need it anyway, so. All right, so that's how you wire that up. This harness is already there, sitting up underneath there. You just need the mating connector, and then you wire up your LEDs. These holes are big enough, I think, for six millimeter. I'm not sure. They're six millimeter lights. They'll fit right in there. Two existing holes. This is because I don't have the rear. I don't have the four-wheel drive option on here. Just rear-wheel drive. So there's a big hole here. You need to clean it up a little bit, make it slightly larger to fit this uh, lamp in there. And I think it's a 16 millimeter lamp, but don't quote me on that. It's got a nice little rim there that's chrome. It's got a cover you can take out and change the bulb if you wanted to. I don't know why. And then also, the horn works. Um, the wiring's already here. Again, underneath the dash, you'll find a, a black and a black yellow. And if you go in here, You'll find the wiring up in here, and you'll see a mount on the front of the radiator. You gotta take this thing off, there's two screws, and then you can get a horn in there. You can even run two different tone horns if you want, because there's mounts on either side. You'll see a little divot on the radiator and a hole, I think an M5 or something like that. It's a common metric fastener to hold the horn on. You buy the horn, and these lights online, it'll probably cost you about, with the flasher, it'll probably cost you about 15 bucks. And this, Male female set costs about ten. Although you might be able to find it cheaper if you're waiting for this low boat from China. Alright. So to add the kill switch, it's not that much harder. You buy yourself a pack of relays. We'll show you what I got here. Buy yourself a box of five relays and five um what do you call them? The sockets for the relays with the wires. I got this off of Amazon. I think it was like 15 bucks. You get yourself that. Take out a socket here. Take out a relay. You look at the top of the relay, it shows you which pins go to what. Let me plug this in here. So this is the kill switch. Oh, it doesn't start up on you. Let's see which diagram I drew up the kill switch on. This isn't the world's greatest schematic, but it's what I got. We always label everything. I got one of these things on Amazon, or I think Wally World, they price matched it. And you get generic labels for about two bucks a piece. Label everything. So. It says star starter inhibitor relay on the front of this one. And it's up underneath the dash, but I've got another one here so I can just show you how it's wired up. So it's up underneath the dash. You zip tie the relay. See, it has a lug. And then you've got some colored wires coming off. White and black are your coil. So white on this side, black on that side. That energizes the coil. So off of the leg of this connector that I showed you earlier, which is positive when the switch is on and this is your ground, you run a wire, you, I would suggest putting a diode in there. You can buy a pack of them for about two bucks. You can buy dozens of diodes from China. It takes forever to get in, but eBay has them. And they're rated at like 35 volts up to a thousand volts. It doesn't matter which one you use because it's a 12 volt system. And you put it so that the bar is facing towards the relay so the power can flow from positive back to ground and this is to prevent you from doing a back feed but you won't run into that if you don't make a circuit if you don't add anything to the circuit I've added things that's I needed to have that diode in there so um, so the diode optional at this point but here's your actual thingy dingy so you got your white wire on here your black wire on there and then you take underneath the dash you'll see there's a harness that goes to a connector that then goes to the start switch so you can disconnect to replace the start switch. Well, before that harness, you want to take the black wire with the white stripe, cut it, snip it, strip it, and hook the 
Uh, let's see, 30, what did I say? That's uh, blue. I know it's hard to read, but blue on, if you look on here, it's it's labeled, it says 30. It's hard to see here because it won't focus, but this is just a hard thing to focus on. There, it says 30. That's this pin down here in the middle. That's the blue wire. So you hook the blue wire up to your black with white stripe, and then you, on the other end of the black with white stripe, you hook your red wire. And what that does is if this is not energized, in other words, if the parking brake is not pulled up, then you'll be able to start it. If you pull the parking brake up, it'll not only flash the dash, but it'll also energize the relay and pull this contact down. And then you won't be able to start it because there won't be any current to go through there. So that's your starter inhibitor relay. And actually, when you do this, the wiring is all, it's all, let's see, it's all just up underneath here. In other words, you can mount your relay here. Uh, you've got your connection to the harness for the start switch here. You've got your um, your wiring. Where did I put that sample at? Oh, wherever I put the sample. Oh, here it is. You got this wire here, bringing you all your uh, your your sense wires from your parking brake and your uh, oil pressure. You got that right about here, so it's all right in the right vicinity. You won't have to extend anything. You can just put this in. It's a real simple. Oh, I'd say it'd take you about ten to. 30 minutes depending on how handy you are with a soldering iron and I encourage you to use liquid electric tape and heat shrink um, make sure that's water uh, tight these seem these seem to actually be water tight but I would advise on that motorcycle flasher that you take some of that liquid electrical electrical tape and on the bottom of the relay so we'll pull it out of the sock with one hand all right the other hand assisting you take the liquid electrical tape and you spread it around the bottom because this, uh, these relays are actually, do seem to be sealed from the weather, although there's a small hole there, um, where the motorcycle ones are definitely not, are probably not. And the turn signal relays that you'll use for this, the, the three pin turn signal blinker, and you put turn signals on here, like I mentioned in my previous video, that is definitely not. So, anyway, that gives you the start inhibitor function. So, again, if I've got the parking brake up, so all this is is basically, this is in parallel with that relay, okay? And there's a flasher in series with this light, but you've got, say the flasher was here and the light is here and you've got your two leads here off of that connector. You've also got the relay hooked up to the same two leads, the coil of the relay. And so if it's energized, it's, it's not gonna start. You do that all day, wear the switch out, it's not gonna start. Um, so that's that's that tutorial. That's a quick, uh, like I said, about a 10 minute job uh, for the starter inhibitor. Um, let's see, you won't have to buy any additional parts because you've already bought this harness kit for the lights on the dash. You've already bought the harness kit. And um, so you'll just need to get a set of relays. I strongly advise buying about a five pack of these. They just come in super handy. Um, and that's it. That's how you hook that up on your mule so you have a starter inhibitor switch when your parking brake's on. Uh, you may find when you do this circuit that you gotta take this boot up, treat it with some 303, keep it soft and supple, and then underneath, the switch is really like uh, like the retarded engineer that they have, like the guy that can't, is like the underperformer. They said, hey, we want you to do that. And it's a kind of a generic uh, leaf spring switch and you could put a real leaf spring switch there that's sealed from the elements I would suggest maybe looking into that, but I buffed mine up if you'll notice there's a spring in there Put a tighter spring in there that helps um, Clean the surfaces and then cover that whole switch with uh, dielectric grease and put a dam Underneath this assembly. There's two bolts that hold it on so get yourself some uh, type of material you can create a dam with cut a slot for the cable Put that down, then put the whole switch assembly, uh, the whole uh, latch assembly like this down, and then you'll have real good contact with that. You won't have a problem with it being flaky on you. So that wraps it up. Thanks for watching.